another day in paradise. This is the best time of year in Arizona, March, before it gets too hot. It's only in the 50 degrees, maybe low 50s. We were 80 degrees just three or four days ago, and then we had uh, rain all weekend, and it cooled off, and it's, it's only going to be 65 degrees come Wednesday and then back down again so not looking forward to the summer heat but this is the time of year when the weather is perfect but I just wanted to come on and make another video there was some things on my mind and just wanted to uh, share them you know that which I have seen and heard and do believe and hope that it encourages others I've seen a lot of videos about uh, people talking about the missing books of the Bible, 777 missing books of the Bible, and the Bible is incomplete, and you can't trust the word of, that was written because it was written by man, it's been controlled by man, and, you know, I've even heard some people talking about the God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament. And, you know, to me, that's all just nonsense, you know. We have the 66 books of the Bible, and sure, there are other scriptures that are written, but they're not part of that canonized book, Those, uh, that group of 66 books that were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has been in charge of that for forever and don't think that uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us well that word is still dwelling among us the Holy Spirit and he's been in control of that that book and every word in it and the Dead Sea Scrolls they found ancient scrolls of the book of Isaiah and Psalms and Genesis and it proved that the accuracy of those translations over the centuries were accurate, you know, that it uh, hadn't changed. And I saw in the late 90s, it was probably 24 years ago in 1998, was watching TBN. I hated watching TV, so the only channel I watched was TPN, Trinity Broadcasting Network. Well, they had a, a guest on that was talking about the uh, equidistant letter sequences, the Bible codes. And there's a university that is in Israel that dedicates itself to doing just researching and finding Bible codes. And one of the things that they discovered was that at equal letter distance sequences in just the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, which is the chapter that talks about Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, that chapter. And it doesn't matter what letter sequence you pick, if you stick with just that chapter, and you start at the beginning and when you get to the end you come back around to the beginning and you just keep going through it in a loop like that at any letter sequences you're going to find the name Yeshua in there and phrases with the name Yeshua in there over 800 times and they were still finding more this was 24 years ago who knows what they found now they also found that when they translated the New Testament into Hebrew and put all the 66 books together in a single continuous scroll and ran the letter sequences through there from beginning to end. I don't know, remember what number it was. It seems like 34, I don't know. But at that certain letter sequence, as you roll through starting in Genesis, when you get to the end of Genesis, you find the first three letters of the name Yeshua. And as you go into the next book, Exodus, you find the next three letters. When you get to the end of Exodus, you find the first three letters. When you get into the next one, Deuteronomy or Leviticus, you find the first three letters. And that name Yeshua overlaps 
each book into the next book, over each book into the next book, from Genesis through to the end of Revelation. When you get to the end of Revelation, you find the first three letters and you bring it back around to the beginning of Genesis and continue that number sequence and you find the next three letters. So the name Yeshua links those 66 books together in a continuous circular loop. And, you know, only God could do something like that, you know, and the Holy Spirit is in full control. Other Bible codes that they found is like word search. When they look at the scroll, you know, diagonally, you go backwards, up, down, vertical, you find, from what I understand, every one of us are named in there by name in one form or another, whether you're looking at it forwards, backwards, diagonally. It's a tapestry of history because God knew it before he created it. I recognize that sound. That was a pecan hitting the ground. <laughs> Look what I've been doing. I've been out here collecting pecans. I got me my, give me that stick <laughs> with pecans in it. These I still got to, they come in a husk and that originally is green, bright green, and then it turns black in the fall and they get roasted in the sun and they fall right out of there. So, but yeah, I was out here harvesting some pecans and enjoying this beautiful weather. Even though it's only in the low 50s, maybe 50 degrees with the, uh, the wind blowing, there's a little bit of a wind chill, so that makes it nice and comfortable. But I just wanted to make a video and encourage people that the Word of God is God. You know, it's living and active and able to discern <laughs> the soul and the spirit, you know, knows us all by name, knows the number of hairs on our head, who knows what all is in there. You know, not only that, the Hebrew language is just so powerful. Every character has a letter value and a numeric value. And it also has a picture value. If you took it to picture values, just yud heh vav heh the unspoken name of God, because there's no vowels in it. The, the Yud is an open hand. And... The hay is a picture of an open window, which is a symbol for grace. The vav is a nail. And then the hay, grace, open hand of grace, nailed in grace. Is that not a picture of Christ nailed to the cross to bring us all back unto God? And in just the first sentence of Genesis, it gives the, the account of the gospel. Yeah, I don't remember that, but I remember that Trey Smith does that just by the, the image of what each character represents. Then if you look at the, uh, the lineage from Adam to Noah, each name has a meaning. The name Adam means man, and his son Seth, that name means appointed. So when you take those ten names and you put them in order, and you put the meaning of those names, it comes out, man appointed meaningful sorrow. God will come, his death shall bring powerful rest, or meaningful rest. Because the name Noah means rest. And that's what we're entering into at the end of the age of grace is the age of rest, where we enter into God's rest. And that's what Jesus says, to the, when he separates the sheep from the goats, he tells the sheep, well done, my faithful servant, enter into my rest. And he tells the goats to, to flee from him. And he casts them into outer darkness. So don't ever doubt that the word is not the word because the word is in the word and the word is the word. The Word was the Word, and He always will be the Word. Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall never pass away. Not one jot or tittle, not one stroke. It's, it's real, it's alive, it's active. You can trust in it. That's, that's my opinion, and I have no trouble believing it. 
you know it was easy for me to come to Christ it didn't have to beat me over the head with the Bible oh Henry Trujillo he was uh, one of my favorite people on the planet to this day you know when he uh, brought me to Christ and led me to the sinner's prayer and invited me to attend his church he was a man that I much wanted to be like because he was just so warm and friendly and loving and caring he was strong he was authoritative authoritative he was uh, everything that Jesus was and his light shined bright and uh, you know he was just always on the move always looking for somebody else that he could lead to Christ I was like his favorite thing to do that was his drug his he was a junkie for it <laughs> and uh, I've never met anybody like him before or since so God bless you Henry Trujillo thank you for leading me to Jesus I hope that I can encourage others that uh, realize that this is spiritual warfare this is not global war this is a spiritual war and God's gonna win every time Love you. God bless you. See you the next time.